Hi, Theater Philadelphia. We are back with another podcast episode in celebration of our seventh annual Philly Theater Week. Today, we are talking with Kelsey Schlerf and Stephen Glavy, who are part of Sewer Rat's production reading of Perils of the Flower Bed. Kelsey and Stephen, hello. Want to let our audience know who you are and what your role is in this production? Sure. Um, so my name is Kelsey Schlerf. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I am uh, the artistic director of Sewer Rats Productions, and I am also the director of this reading, which I'm very excited about. Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Glavy. Uh, I'm a playwright, and uh, I am the playwright of this reading. The one and only. Beautiful. Uh, so this is, uh, from what I can tell, at least a premiere in the Philly area, um, and we love a new work. Uh, so mind letting our audience know what this play is about? Yeah. Um, Stephen, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, well, um, you want the uh, the elevator pitch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Give whatever um, pitch you want. Well, um, Perils of the Flower Bed is a revisionist fairy tale. It's a gothic. Um, uh, very prosaically, it's a story that um, uh, the kind of machinery of is familiar to us. It's about a young girl who comes to serve uh, at a strange castle um, overseen by a baroness and her brother. And she gets swept into a kind of dangerous um, cauldron of erotics between the two of them. Um, and of course, it turns out, as it is a fairy tale, that there is more than meets the eye at the castle, um, uh, monsters and other strange happenings. Um, in terms of uh, something less prosaic, um, I think, um, although it is a fairy tale and a gothic, it's in the shape of a tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm most interested in a tradition of theater that allows us to play out our inmost doubt and internal contradiction in a grand style, gigantism of the heart. Um, and fairy tales help us to see the ways in which the heart has dark chambers that turn against itself and turn against others and against the image of itself and the other. Um, uh, and uh, I think monsters have kind of been robbed from the theater and been given almost exclusively over to the silver screen. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I want them back. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think the silver screen lets them, you know, gives people access to all of the magic tricks that we can't do in a theater, sure. Mm -hmm. But in a way, because the theater is so much about voice, when you put them on the screen, they lose their voice. Mm -hmm. I want to hear them speak. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to hear them um, not simply tell us who they are, but unravel the problematics of their hearts. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I I personally, like, in terms of, like, movie monsters, I feel like I, that tends to take a very literal approach, which is why it tends to go to the movies so often, because it's like, they can depict it in a very literal way using the technology available to movies, but on stage um in what the theater lacks in the ability to give a very literal depiction of a monster like here's exactly what they look mm -hmm. like exactly there it leaves it to the audience's imagination as well which i i personally find more interesting and more compelling mm -hmm. um uh, speaking of what i found interesting and compelling uh mm -hmm. the description of the show that's on the marketing calls it a quote gothic exploration of queer desire and unreal bodies of monstrosity and the frightening inescapability of family ties 
as a queer person myself, this all certainly perked my ears. <laughs> um, so what is it about the genres of fantasy and like certainly a more like gothic, perhaps bordering on horror uh, approach plays well with these themes of queerness, monstrosity and family? Yeah. Um... I think. Uh, yes, sir, but oh yeah, please, please. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. No, 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 no. You, you give it a. I'll, I'll, I'll come in after. Okay. You. Whoever wants to answer that super simple question first. Well, okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I think that horror and fantasy is a really interesting way. It's a really interesting sort of lens to view human emotion through. I think it's one that we don't often get to see, especially in the theater. Um. So I think that sort of the opportunity to. Uh, you know, view queerness and otherness and discomfort in one's own body and discomfort with, you know, with one's own emotions. I think um, that, I think that this sort of fantasy wor world and this um, kind of gothic retelling is a really, uh, it it's a really good sort of metaphor for trying to kind of understand what's happening to you, you know, both physically and emotionally. Yeah, that's great. Um, and, and... I think monstrosity is sort of the place where internal contradiction meets the flesh and is expressed through the flesh. Um, and uh, when I say internal contradiction, I mean, you know, not only um, ideas like dysphoria, um, uh, feelings that you know you know what kind of body do i have and what kind of body am i attracted to a feeling that the body should shift in terms of its relation to another should change um but also um rage Absolutely. sometimes you feel like your body can't contain your rage and you you, mm. you almost need another body for the rage that you have mm. And for the pain. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Philly Theater Week is all about inviting audiences who perhaps might not have heard of your company before or might have, like, you know, not been sure whether to, like, take the leap and take a chance. Um, so how do you think that this production um, welcomes new audiences to... Uh, both sewer rats and to the greater Philadelphia theater community. Yeah, um, we love participating in Philly Theater Week because it is kind of this celebration of all the different companies, you know, and all the different sort of voices um, in the community. So I think that's really cool. Um, I think this show in particular is so it's it's really interesting just in terms of the just emotional connections of the characters and, and everything that we've talked about already. Um, I think it's a really sort of interesting way to kind of bring people in um, who may not have seen our work before because this is very different in terms of style, in terms of um, you know, just and themes. Um, and, and, you know, I think that the sort of gothic fairy tale retelling is something we haven't done before. So I think this will kind of pique people's interest. Awesome. Um, so tell me more about Sewer Rats Productions. Um, yeah. What, how, how did you come to be? Uh, what are your goals as a company? All, all that good stuff. Yeah, so our um, mission is all about um, uplifting new playwrights, um, giving opportunities to new up and coming artists. Um, we started back in 2018, um, just as literally two people uh, who wanted to put on a show um, for the Fringe. And we um, just from there have kind of connected with other artists and sort of brought them in. Um, you know, Sarah Billings, our associate artist director, is a friend who, you know, we thought, you know, you're really smart, you're really talented, please, you know, join us, join this sort of collective that we have. Um, so basically what we want to keep doing is, you know, uplifting new voices, telling new stories, and, um, you know, providing opportunities for um, like-minded up-and-coming artists. That all sounds awesome. Um, and plus, I I love rats in general. Hey. Like, I, I just think they're neat. Um, I used to be a rat dad myself. Uh, so I, <laughs> you know, I saw rats and I was like, ooh. Awesome. Okay. 
Um, Stephen, uh, what was the process? How what has the process been so far in the creation of this script? Um, has it seen other productions, or is this the first time that it's getting a read through? Oh man, well you know, uh, in many ways, this play goes back to me being like a freaky little queer kid growing up in the Bronx whose mother would, for some reason, let him buy whatever weird VHS tapes he wants. Like, you that'll know, do it. But has risen from the grave or Frankenstein and the monster from hell. But so, you know, this, this, in some ways, it's sort of these, I, you know, the, the ideas for this are pretty ancient in my in my DNA, um, but uh, it's sort of a, ver a version of this play was the first play I ever had put on stage when I was in undergrad, uh, very, very different then. Um, and I reworked it um, when I was at the University of Iowa getting my MFA in playwriting um, then. And, uh, but it's never had any kind of production outside of uh, a university. So this is the first uh, sort of real world reading of the play. Well, the play graduated too. That's wonderful. <laughs> it's the, now it's out in the real world. Um, what are your hopes for the future of this piece after this reading? Are you looking to like try to make it into a full production? I mean, hell yeah, <laughs> if it could come about, that would be wonderful, yeah, um, of course. It, it, it kind of screams, I think, for an extremely luxurious rendition. Absolutely. Um, so, just, you know, pray to your dark gods and uh, got it, got water it. the fatted calf and we'll see what comes about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get one of the fatted caps that I have just like laying around my apartment. And oh, cool. <laughs> on <Yeah>. that. <laughs> um, as as somebody who works in a theater company that uh does readings a lot, um, I always find uh readings to be a great opportunity to it, it's sort of like it's audience interactive adjacent where like readings create an environment where the audience feels like they're part of the creation process as well um to possibly like provide feedback on the piece um and to in a way like even just being an ear in the room uh provide an opportunity to like think about okay so what moments like really work what moments are ones that like I want to explore further um is is that the uh vibe that we're going for with this reading um, yeah, to some extent, um, we're not planning on doing a formal kind of talk back or anything like that. Um, but we definitely do always, um, you know, appreciate feedback, um, from audience members. Um, this reading is going to be kind of interesting because it is sort of semi staged. Um, so it's kind of a hybrid of a, you know, a production and a, and a reading. Um, so I think, um, you know, I think audiences will kind of have that feeling of, of, you know, being part of the creation of this piece. Um, and I just think it'll be really interesting for folks to kind of see this, this, you you know, new version. Awesome. Um, and in terms of Sewer Rats uh, productions, what do you feel is the company's impact on the uh, greater Philadelphia theater, like the past, its present, uh, moving forward? Yeah, um, what I hope is that, um, you know, folks see us, um, you know, as a, a a safe place, um, you know, both to like to send your work and to want to kind of work with us. Um, I hope that people see us as sort of visionaries and, um, you know, maybe even like kind of the next generation of, of leadership, you know, in the Philadelphia theater community. I, I hope that we just kind of continue to grow and continue to provide opportunities to folks. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and of course, the age old question, as old as time, but I feel necessary as well. Why this production now? Sure. Um, I think, um, and we talked a little bit about this. Um, I think this production now um, is a good idea because I think 
I always have seen theater as a means of escape, as a means of sort of, you know, taking on somebody else's problems for a while and getting to kind of forget about your own. Um, and so I think that this sort of fantasy um, retelling and this sort of, um, you know, completely different sort of world in this fairy tale um, world, um, I think is a way to kind of just like forget about everything that's going on in today's world, forget about everything that you're stressed about and be able to kind of just, again, um, kind of discuss these themes in a totally different way, in a totally new kind of space. Cool. Uh, Stephen, yeah, any I, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I part of the kind of magic trick of the theater is that it gets you to um, encounter problems that really are, are your problem. Mm -hmm. um, but put up on the stage, you get to perhaps see it in a way, I don't wanna overstate the possibility that it can really change you but it can at least give you a new perspective. Sure. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously, um, I think that a lot of the discourse in our culture over the past decade has been about managing sexuality and sexual identity, giving names to our desires, that maybe used to be more mysterious or diffuse or undifferentiated, but also about contending with or controlling or even trying to bring to light or to justice the darker part of, of eroticism, the part of eros that we externalize and we put inside the monster. And of course, in many ways, that's the same song that monsters have always been singing. And it's always been us singing it through them. Sure. Um, but, um, you know, the play is a kind of a monster mash in some ways. Look, there is a werewolf in the play. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. <laughs> uh, but, but, monsters well, me, <laughs> but monsters are serious things to me. I mean, at least they can be as serious as they are playful. Um, and they let us play with what we fear in ourselves and they let us enjoy what we fear in ourselves, even love what we fear. So maybe we can reintegrate these parts of ourselves and learn to claim them as our own. But even our worst parts, um, the darkest parts, the parts that we don't know how to forgive or, or to love, um, the monsters give us a place to put them and an arena in which to struggle with them. Um, so that, you know, that's in some ways a plea for why this play now, but in other ways, it's a way of saying, um, this is what theater should always be doing to some mm. extent. Mm -hmm. Totally. In, in a way that um, stands outside of um, nowness. Mm. To remember yeah. that you are human and what, what it is to be human ex contains extremes. Yeah, um, I the part about like the 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 uh, need to like uh, make sense of like the mysterious and all of that definitely resonates with me. I think a lot of like people's uh, concerns regarding the queer communities from the outside is like a fear of the unknown. Um, and a fear of what they don't understand. So I think like a lot of times, like we as queer people try to placate by being like, no, it's okay. We're normal people like you and we're, you can categorize us mm -hmm. like this. And it's really easy to explain every time. So like, don't worry, please stop worrying. And, um, and this isn't to be like labels are bad ah, because, you know, I use them all the time. They're great. Language is awesome. Um, but you know, I'm not normal and I think that's the cool part. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> I think that's really neat that I'm not normal. And I think that not being normal is totally awesome and cool. And I think the parts of the human experience that are hard to explain are often like are the most beautiful parts as well. Um, so yeah, that's all, that's all, uh, resonating with me. Um, and I, uh, can't wait for audiences to catch this show, which speaking of, I uh, want to let folks know when it is, where it is. Absolutely. Um, so this show is one night only, um, April 6th at 7.30 at the CEC um, Community Education Center, the Meeting House Theater, um, which is located at 3500 Lancaster Ave in West Philly. Wonderful. Uh, Kelsey and Stephen, thank you so much for chatting with us and for our audience. Uh, we hope to see you in the theater this week. And always just come to the theater. Just yeah. show up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, CJ. Thank you.